Hi there, it's Mrs. Ferris from Wood Library, and I'm getting ready to shine the spotlight on someone special. Will you join me? Today, we're spotlighting David McPhail, the author and illustrator of over 170 books for children. He was born in 1940, and he got his start drawing, well, so he says, when his grandmother gave him a black crayon one day, and he started drawing on the wall. Now his grandmother could have taken the crayon away, but instead she got some old paper bags, cut them up, and let him use those for the paper. And he hasn't stopped, stopped drawing since. He likes to draw pictures of animals, so he draws stories with bears in them, and pigs and other farm animals, and forest animals, and he likes to draw people too, so he has a whole series about a boy named Edward. Today we're going to listen to a couple of stories and we're going to do some crafts, all related to the books, all done by David McPhail. So let's get started. I should tell you that he got started when he was only in his 20s, and he published his first book called The Bear's Toothache. And as the years have gone on, his style has changed a little bit. He still uses pen and ink, but I think you'll see that they, his pictures have warmed up some. So let's get started with one about a pig named Pig Pig. This is Pig Pig Gets a Job. And there he is coming out of school and stopping at a store window. I think he'd like to buy something. One day after school, Pig Pig raced home to make an announcement. I want some money, he said to his mother. I want to buy something. Well, what do you want to buy, dear? asked his mother. I don't know yet, Pig Pig answered, but something. And what will you do to get this money? asked his mother. Do? asked Pig Pig. Do? said his mother. If you want some money, you must do something to earn it. Pig Pig thought for a moment. Well, I could be a cook, he said. I'm good at making mud pies. Oh, you certainly are, said his mother, agreeing. But not everyone likes mud pies. Maybe you could fix some sandwiches for our lunch. Oh, I could get a job building houses, said Pig Pig. I could use the hammer and saw that I got for my birthday. You might start with something a bit smaller, said his mother. A birdhouse would look nice in our yard. How about if I get a job as an auto mechanic, said Pig Pig. I could fix race cars when they break. <laughs> you could wash them and keep them shiny too, his mother pointed out. In fact, our car could stand a good cleaning. Or I could get a job at the dump, said Pig Pig, picking up trash and crushing it. <laughs> picking up your room would be good practice, urged his mother. But please, don't crush anything. Pig Pig thought of yet another job. I could work at the circus, he said, taking care of the animals, training them and stuff. Stuff like feeding them, Pig Pig's mother asked. And speaking of animals, has Willie had his supper yet? I have a great idea, said, shouted Pig Pig. You could give me a job. I could, his mother replied. But what can you do? Do? Why, I could do plenty. I can feed Willie every day and clean my room and wash the car and fix it when it breaks down. Well, washing it will be enough, interrupted his mother. Is there anything else? There sure is, Pig Pig went on. I can fix lunch sometimes and build things when we need them. Oh, splendid, said Pig Pig's mother. I could pay you and you would have money to save or to buy something you want. And we could call all those things my job, said Pig Pig proudly. We could, said his mother, and we will, and you know, they did. So I 
thought to go along with our pig pig story, we could make pig snouts. In your bag of materials, you found something that looks like this. It's part of an egg carton that, had you been here with me, we would have painted together, but since we're not, I painted it pink and I punched holes in each side. Now, what I should have said at the very beginning is that you'll need a few things from home to do our crafts today. So one of the things you'll need is a marker of some sort, whether it's a broad one or a thinner one. You will probably want a pencil, some scissors, and perhaps a glue stick. Although in your bag, I also gave you some glue, but that's for another project. So if you take your pig snout and on the bottom, well, in order to breathe, pigs need nostrils. So let's draw on some nostrils. That just means two circles on the bottom using your black marker. So there's one. And I'm going to draw another circle right next to it. The same size if I can. So there's my pink nostrils. And then I'm going to take one of the pieces of pink yarn that is in the bag and I'm going to tie it onto the pig snout. In fact, I have one already here. And then tie the other one on the other side. And I just did it in a double knot, tying it on there. I need one more string here. So I've got my other string that I'm going to tie on the other side. And when I'm all done with that, I can tie on my pig snout and look just like a pig. What do you think? Okay, well, I'm gonna take just a little bit of a break here to clear off my work area, and we're gonna have another story. So I'll be right back. Welcome back. Are you ready for another story? Now we're going to go and explore some of David McPhail's books about bears. He's done a couple of series, let's see. He's done some stories about Emma, and he's, done a series about Big Brown Bear. And that's what we're gonna hear about right now. This is Big Brown Bear's Up and Down Day. And you can see, looks like Mr. Bear or Big Brown Bear just got up and somebody is at his door. Let's find out more. Big Brown Bear woke up and opened his eyes. He rolled over and when he looked down, he saw one of his slippers scooting across the floor. Stop, slipper, yelled Big Brown Bear. And the slipper stopped moving and a head poked out from beneath it. It looked like a mouse. Hey, mouse, growled Big Brown Bear. Where are you going with that slipper? I'm not a mouse, said the slipper thief. I'm a rat and I'm taking the slipper home. It will make a good bed for me to sleep in. Well, rat, said Big Brown Bear. It may make a good bed, but it makes an even better slipper. Now put it back. But you have two of them, said rat. Big Brown Bear swung his feet over the side of the bed and slammed them down. Boom! 
hard on the floor. I have two feet, too, he said to Rat, and two feet need two slippers. Further argument would be useless. Rat could see that. So he abandoned the slipper and disappeared through a hole in the wall. Well, Big Brown Bear put on his slippers and then went downstairs to the kitchen. There he cooked up a big pot of oatmeal. And while the oatmeal was cooking, he got a bowl down from the cupboard. He filled up a pitcher with cream and set it down on the kitchen table. He was standing at the stove, stirring the oatmeal, when the doorbell rang. Who could that be? He wondered. Our baseball game isn't until this afternoon. When Big Brown Bear went to the door and opened it, no one was there. At least he didn't see anybody until he looked down. And even then, all he could see was the top of a wide-brimmed hat with a long nose sticking out from under the brim. Big Brown Bear leaned down. There was a rat under that brim, the very same rat that had been trying to steal his slipper. What do you want now? Big Brown Bear asked. As you can see, I'm wearing my slippers, so don't expect me to give you one. I don't want anything from you, explained Rat. Instead, I have something for you. And he put down the satchel he was carrying. That's a bag, like a suitcase. And he opened it up. You have won a trip, said Rat, and I'm here to present it to you. What sort of trip, asked Big Brown Bear. Any sort of trip you want, answered Rat up to the mountains or down to the seashore, up to the North Pole or down to the South Pole? What it sounds like, said Big Brown Bear, is an up or down sort of trip. It's all up to you, said Rat. Now let's get down to the business of deciding where you'll be going. Well, Big Brown Bear began to pace up and down the walk. And when he came to where Rat was standing, he bent down and said, hmm, how soon can I go on this trip? Oh, right away, said Rat. But you can't wear your slippers. They're not allowed on this trip. It says so right here in the fine print. And he took some papers out of his satchel and held them up in front of Big Brown Bear's nose. No slippers, said Big Brown Bear. What an odd rule that is. But I suppose I can pack them in my suitcase. Oh, I'm afraid not, said Rat. That's rule number 47. No slippers allowed in suitcases. Well, finally, Big Brown Bear stopped pacing and sat down to pull his slippers on tighter. I've decided where I want to go, he told Rat. Where? asked Rat. Nowhere, said Bear. Not up, not down. I want to stay right here. Rat slowly put the papers back in his satchel and started to walk away. How about a nice bowl of oatmeal before you go, asked Big Brown Bear. That would be good, said Rat. I'm starving. Big Brown Bear led the way to his kitchen. He got down another bowl and filled both bowls up with oatmeal. He sliced some bananas and put them on top. Rat grabbed the spoon and started in, and he didn't put down the spoon until the bowl was scraped clean. I'm filled up, he said to Big Brown Bear. Thank you, that was delicious. And then he waddled to a hole in the kitchen wall and squeezed through it. You're most welcome, said Big Brown Bear, calling after him, but not before he looked down to make sure that he still had his slippers on. Big Brown Bear went to find his baseball and mitt. He found them on a shelf in his closet, and as he was getting them down, the baseball fell into a big box. And the box was filled with all sorts of things that he hadn't seen in a long time. On top was his old yellow wind-up racing car. Big Brown Bear wound up the key and then put the car down on the floor. Zoom! 
Away it went. Still works, said Big Brown Bear. Next, he pulled out his old maroon sweater with the gold B on it. He tugged it down over his head and tried it on. Oh, it has a few moth holes, he said, but it still fits. Big Brown Bear was taking something else out of the box when he heard his car coming back and Rat was driving. What a wonderful car, said Rat. Wherever did you find it? I found it in this box of old stuff, said Big Brown Bear, while I was looking for my baseball. Well, I'll help you look for your ball, said Rat. I'm small and I can see in the dark. He climbed into the box to help Big Brown Bear find the baseball. Big Brown Bear found his old cowboy hat and he plopped it on his head. I can wear this while I play ball, he said. He reached into the box one more time and came up with a well-worn, can you guess, slipper. Just as Rat popped up holding the missing baseball. I found it, said Rat. Good job, said Big Brown Bear, and I found something for you. It will make a perfect bed, Rat said. Oh, thank you. You're welcome, said Big Brown Bear. And there's something else I want you to have too. He wound up the wind-up car and held it steady while Rat loaded the slipper into the back and then jumped in front behind the wheel. And when Big Brown Bear let go, the car sped away. Yippee, yelled the rat. So long, Bear. So long to you too, Rat. And then Big Brown Bear picked up his ball and mitt and went outside to play. So that's the story about Big Brown Bear and his up and down day. Well, we're going to do a craft now. We're going to make a teddy bear puppet. In your bag, you will have gotten two teddy bears and there are holes punched around the outside. So I want you to take one of those and turn it around so that the markings are on the outside of both and you should have your holes lined up. And then I want you to find that long piece of brown yarn. One end has some red tape on it, almost making it feel like a, well, a shoelace. And we're gonna use that as our needle because we're going to stitch our bear together to make a puppet. So let's start. going in from the back side. And right now it doesn't matter which side is the back side, but I have to give you a, a little clue. I already drew a face on mine. So I'm going to come in from the back side and then I'm going to go down through the hole on the front and pull my yarn through almost all the way. But I'm going to leave a little bit of a tail there like that. And what mom or dad can do is they could tie a knot there or you could just get a piece of tape and tape it in place. But what we're going to continue to do is we're going to go down through one hole and up through another. So here we'll come out and then we'll go in through the next hole and pull it through and then out through that one we're going to do this all the way around in from the front and back through from the back in through the front and back out through the back so we're halfway done so keep on going I hope that that tape makes it a little easier for you to thread the, the yarn through.
keep on going. This is a small motor skill, meaning you needed to use your fingers to hold your yarn. And that's the same skill you'll need when you go to school and you want to hold your pencil or your crayon or your paintbrush. So there it is, he's all stitched. I'm going to again, either tie it in a knot or just tape it to the back. And when you tie it through with a knot, I really do recommend you put some tape on it because I think that'll hold it in place. And then what you can do is you can draw a face on it, two eyes, a nose, and a mouth. And then he's all set for you to put your hand inside and he'll be your puppet. And that's our big brown bear craft. Well, I'm gonna take a break again and get us set up for our last story and our last craft. So you can have a stretch break, a snack break, a potty break, whatever you might need, and join me back here for one more story. Welcome back for our last story in this Spotlight program. We're gonna be hearing The Day the Sheep Showed Up. This is another series that uh, David McPhail has done there's one about a race, and there's one about a rooster crowing. So you'll find these in our easy reader section. One day, when the barnyard animals woke up, they saw something strange. I wonder what it is, said the duck. It's white like you, said the goose. Maybe it's a duck. It doesn't have webbed feet. It can't be a duck. Well, it can't be a goose either. Well, it has four legs and so do I. Maybe it's a pig. But it's eating clover like me, so it must be a cow, said the cow. Well, as long as it's not a rooster, one rooster is in this barnyard is enough, said rooster. If it barks, it's a dog. Can you say something? Bah, went the strange animal. I am not a duck or a goose or a pig or a cow or a rooster or a dog. I'm a sheep. A sheep? What's a sheep? A barnyard animal like you, only different, the way all of you are different. You mean like goose and me, asked the duck. We both have webbed feet, said the goose, but I honk and he quacks. Exactly, said the sheep. Or like the pig and the dog, they each have four legs. But he likes mud, said the dog, and I don't. And you and I both eat clover, but I have a long tail and yours is short, said cow. But we are all barnyard animals, the sheep reminded them. And for a moment, all of the animals were silent. And then the dog spoke. Do you like to play games? Like tag, said the goose. Or hide and seek, said the pig. I love to play games, said the sheep. Can we play one now? Sure, said the goose. Tag, you're it. The sheep laughed and chased the other animals. All morning they played until they got so tired, they decided to rest. 
You get tired just as we do, the duck told the sheep. Exactly, said the sheep. Bah! So for our last craft, I'm going to direct the camera down a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. You're going to need that piece of black paper that was in your bag, the two googly eyes, the container of glue, and that's what that is in there, don't eat it. It's not paint this time. And the cotton balls. And before we get started, I'm gonna have you pull on the cotton balls just a little bit to kind of fluff them out more. I think I use, yeah. And that way they'll be able to smoosh together. So just don't pull too hard because you want it to stay together as a cotton ball, but you just want to make it a little fluffier. You see what I'm going to do? Just pulling it ever so slightly. Do that to each one. And I wanted us to do this before we did the glue because we don't want our fingers to get all gluey before it's time. What have I got there? I've got six. I'm going to see if. Not sure how many. I gave you some extras just in case. But I'm going to. I'm going to keep mine at seven and see if I need more, then I can add them. Okay. So the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure you also have a couple other things handy, like a pencil, because we're going to be tracing your hand. You may want a clothespin, and I'll show you why. And you may want to use a glue stick for the eyeballs and a pair of scissors. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to take your piece of black paper, put it down on the table, and trace your hand around it. So I'm going to direct my camera down so you can see what I'm doing. So I have my black paper. I'm going to lay my hand on it. And your hand is going to be able to fit on here. I did mine a little bit uh, earlier. And then trace around your fingers and your thumb so that you have a shape that looks kind of like that. Can you see? I've got my four fingers and then my thumb is sticking out just a little bit. And that should leave you enough room to draw a circle and then two fingerprints. That's about the size that those are going to be. So that, that's for the face and for the ears. And then Use your scissors and cut those out. And you can pause the uh, video for a minute while you're doing that. I've got mine all ready. Okay, so we're back with your hand shape, your circle or oval that's going to be the head, and two fingerprints that are going to be the ears. Open up your container of glue, and what we're going to do is we're going to dip our cotton balls into the glue and then put it on to the handprint, which is the body of the sheep. Now this is one I was suggesting you may want to use a clothespin because then you can dip it in and your fingers won't get yucky. You don't need a lot on there, but just enough to stick it down in. Now you can easily do that also with your fingers. Pick it up, set it on the glue, and you may want to protect your work area. This is a plastic table, so I'm okay with that. But, and then add that one on. Take another one. And 
and I'm letting the glue drip off before I move it over. And you see by pulling the cotton balls apart a little bit, I did get them so that they were fluffy enough that they can mesh into each other. You don't see the black coming through from the other side. And you just wanna make sure that you've got your cotton balls all the way down to your fingertips there. I think I'm gonna stick one in the middle here. And then I think we'll do one more up here. And there's my sheet. And then I'm going to take the circle. And you can use your glue stick if you want, or you can use a little bit of the glue there to put that right on where your thumb would have been. And I'm going to put my ears on before I even do that. So take my glue stick. Just put some glue right on the thumb and add that in there. And the last thing you need would be your eyes. Oop, almost lost it. Another way you could glue the eyes on is you could get a Q-tip and just dip it into your glue and put a dot of it each place that you want to have the eyeball. But there is my sheep and I'm going to close up my glue because I don't want that to get in my way. And there's my sheep. And what would he say? Bah! Well, let's get this back up here. Thank you for joining me for our spotlight program on David McFall, the sheep and the bear and the piggy nose are the fun things that we did today. We had three fun stories and we hope you'll join us another time when we shine the spotlight on someone special in children's books. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.